Wanna see how I made this new classic interior in Blender? Right, let's go! I start putting in some geometry by extruding the edges of a plane to define the overall shape of the room. I also make sure to leave space for windows and doors. After that, just extrude everything up and we have the basic walls. Then we can add windows headers, ledges and other architectural details. I don't have any blueprints for this, but I have an idea about the overall design, so I will block out some of the furniture, then adjust the walls accordingly. I'm looking for a spacious feel. Since I want a custom pattern on the floor, I will have to model it plank by plank. I make use of the repeating geometry to fill up the space. Later I will shape it using the knife tool. A bevel modifier adds some extra detail and highlights. All of the detail on the walls, ceiling, doorways and windows I make by extruding a custom profile made with simple poly modeling. There really isn't anything special here, just manual work. At this point I want to start filling the scene with furniture. For the table I want really soft shapes, so I will go with subdivision modeling. The things I keep in mind are where I place supporting edge loops and how tight they are. Also, I make sure to keep an even space topology. That way I won't have stretching in the UVs and weird deformations once I subdivide the model. Some models I already have, so I just copy paste them in the scene. This is really important. As much as I like modeling, I try to save as much time as I can by using pre-made assets. Also, because things are still loose, I'd like to take the time to adjust some proportions. For more complex models, like the chandelier, I open a second blend file and model there. It helps keep things clean. A quick tip is to figure out all the repetitive parts and just model them once. Then copy and translate until you have a complete model. When picking out accessories, I try to match the overall style of the interior. Also, the ornate walls, interesting furniture and chandeliers already act as a point of interest in the image. That's why I keep it simple with the additional accessories and place them so that they complement the image rather than take up the focus. As an architectural image, it's best to keep the composition static and informative. A good general rule for interior visualization is to have the camera level to the floor so that the vertical lines stay that way and at a height slightly below eye level. It's time for lighting. There's a ton of approaches to light an interior the easiest, most lazy way is to just have a plain light in front of the window. Simple as that. Dial in the scale, lower the spread just a bit and adjust the intensity. Now here's a pro tip to nail the exposure every time. From color management, remove any color transforms you might be using. I want to look at the raw color data. Now I can confidently crank up the light until I see the highlights of the image starting to burn out. And that's it, now I have a solid base to continue. To fake sunlight, I've just added another light. Set it to disc and play with the angle and position until I get a nice looking sunspot. Adding some color might make things better, but for this particular scene, keeping things simple and clean feels much better. Before texturing everything, I like to add simple colors to the models just to get a feel for the overall scene. That way, I can quickly experiment with different looks and styles. If this was a commercial project, the materials would have been pretty fine, but in personal projects, experimenting should be a priority. Pretty much every shader in the scene is a combination of a diffuse, roughness and normal or bump map. Very basic stuff. The only thing a bit more interesting is the travertine table, which uses a bit of subsurface scattering. Last but not least, we have some color corrections to do. Rarely the raw render is good enough and leaving some stuff for post is usually a smart plan. Luckily, there isn't much to add here other than some contrast. I also want to highlight the chairs. Cryptomat comes in handy to isolate them and add a bit more color into the fabric. The combination of an interesting shape and a more vivid color really makes them the highlight of the image. A few additional touches like lens distortion, glares and the noising come in handy to wrap up the image. Let me know if you enjoy this longer style breakdown. If you liked the video, share and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.